game mechanic phrase that I was unfamiliar with until very recently is shedding. Now, shedding is a game uh, kind of like Uno or Crazy Eights, where you have a hand of cards and your goal is to get rid of your cards. It's really a, it's a pretty terrible word as far as imagery goes for a type of game. And as far as games go, it's really not one of my favorite mechanics. I mean, um, there's a few games that, that I think do it okay. Uh, Red 7 being one of the more recent ones that I think uses the mechanism of um, emptying out your hand as quickly as possible to win the game. But shedding is, I mean, that's, yeah. All that to say, we are, we're going to be looking at a shedding game today. Uh, we are looking at Crazier 8's Camelot. Now, first and foremost, uh, Crazier Eights. Um, this I'm not sure if this is going to be one in a series of games, as it's got sort of the the subtitle Crazier Eights, specifically Camelot. I'm not sure what the future plans for this is, um, but let's uh, you know a, a quick gist of what this game is. It's a shedding game. You know, obviously, it's based on Crazy Eights, uh, a game that I was also unfamiliar with. I mean, I I know the name Crazy Eights. Um, Looking into it, Crazy Eights is essentially Uno that you can play with a deck of playing cards uh, with less special cards. There's no reverse, skip, anything like that. Now, the thing with Crazy Eights and with Uno is that they're very random. I mean, you're left completely up to uh, whatever hand of cards you've got. And it's there's not a whole lot of strategy that you can either anticipate or you can do. Now, Crazy Eights Camelot attempts to mitigate this by mixing those types of games with essentially Magic the Gathering. Now if you haven't played Magic the Gathering or you're unfamiliar with trading card games, essentially each card has um, a little description. It's, you're either putting out a monster or, or some sort of fighting item or you're putting out a spell that has some sort of, sort of, some sort of effect. Crazier Eights just takes the spell aspect of those trading card games. So each card has an effect. It's, it's either a continued effect, in, in which case it's called an asset and you can place it in front of you, or if it's an event, it's a one-time use event and you play, and then it's discarded for the rest of the game. Now, every single card has one of those aspects on it. It's either an event or it's an asset and it can be played in front of you or discarded. So the object of the game, in order to win, you have to empty out your hand. So it's great, you can literally use any one of these cards to empty out and put in front of you use it as, as an event or an asset. Uh, so really there's no limitations as far as that goes. But every single turn, at the start of your turn, you are drawing one card. You draw one card, you can then play a card in front of you as an event or an asset, and then you can place a card on the discard pile. And that's where the Uno aspect of this game comes in, the Crazy, crazy Eights aspect of this game. Both of those games, you have to match either suit or number uh, in order to play the discard. So. You're drawing a card every turn and you're potentially discarding two. So every turn you have a potential of losing one card since you're drawing a card at the beginning of the game. Or at the beginning of every turn. Uh, you can place a card down in front of you, but if you don't have a card that you can place on the discard pile, you end your turn and you kind of are right back where you started and you haven't lost any cards. And that's it. You go until someone is out of cards and then they win the game. It's, I mean, as far as... A straightforward game goes, that's about as simple as it gets, especially with a shedding game. You know, you match the suit, you, you place it on the discard pile. And if that were all this game had going for it, I, uh, I, I probably wouldn't even be doing a review for it. The interesting part is when you get the Magic the Gathering aspect thrown into this game where every single card has an effect. Because the effects in this game are so overpowered and, and, and unbalanced that they almost balance themselves in a way. Because everybody has a whole hand of cards that can do just about anything. Uh, depending on when you play it, when you place it, there's cards that will change the win condition of the game, there's cards that will make it so you get to choose a player that's going to draw more than one card at the beginning of their turn. Uh, really, we haven't played every single card so we don't know exactly everything that's in this deck with the amount of times that we've played. But as overpowered as a card may seem at a time, we've seen cards come in and counter it. And so no longer is this just sort of a shedding game where you're trying to get rid of your hand. All of a sudden, it's this balancing act between playing events and assets and playing spells. It's, it's this weird, like, wizard's duel almost. And yes, it is a shedding game. It's not very deep at all. Um, it's very dependent on being able to read well because all the cards have very specific instructions that are written out well. They're, they're very clear as to what you're supposed to do with them. 
but it takes the game of just matching numbers and colors and it adds in this whole new level that I wouldn't say it's groundbreaking, nothing like that, but it, it, it's very interesting. It all of a sudden kicks up this genre just a notch, uh, just enough to make it way more interesting than it otherwise would have been. Now this is a game that when I originally saw it, I, I, I didn't think I was going to enjoy, enjoy it very much at all. And that's simply because I don't like games like Uno and Crazy Eights. Uh, but it had a few things going for it uh, that caught my attention. First and foremost was the art. The fact that all the images are you that are used in this game are actual paintings from 16th, 17th, 18th century, which is great because the the you know you can use the art for free if it's that old, so that's kind of cool. Uh, but you've got actual pieces of artwork on every single one of these cards, and it's really cool. I I just wish that. Um, along with the artist's name at the bottom of every card would have been the name of the, the painting that's used. Uh, so it's really eye-catching and it's, it's incredible how well all these paintings work with the theme of the game and each specific card. So that was eye-catching. It was cool to look at at the very least and that's kind of what drew me into it. The fact that you've got these spells and these assets and these events that every single card in the game has is it's a game changer. It, it changes the whole feel of that shedding mechanic. So it's weird. You've got this shell of a, of a game that I don't like. Uh, and inside that shell is a bunch of stuff that is, oh, so unbalanced and overpowered in such a way that it works out. And, and all of a sudden you've got this 15 minute game that is very easy to explain uh, and pretty darn fun to play. It's not the most strategic game in the world. Obviously, with this amount of overpowered spells, you're not going to be able to know exactly what you need to, need to do. We also got a chance to play with the, uh, the expansion that's going to be a stretch goal on Kickstarter. It just adds a little bit more variety. It's more cards with uh, more multicolored cards and, and suits. Um, again, it fits into the game seamlessly. And so any additional cards that you get into this are a bonus because the thing that makes this game fun is the unpredictability and the overpoweredness of each individual card. And you go from having Uno to something something different, something close, but different and way more exciting. And yeah, you know, mixing Uno with Magic the Gathering is not something I thought that I needed. And I wouldn't say that it is something that I need, but it's something that's pretty enjoyable and, and quite a bit of fun. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know. Uh, and yeah, thanks for watching. Thank you.